and welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about some helpful tips and tricks that can be used for some pretty specific calculations. But they're tricks that I thought were always pretty cool and have always stuck with me. So I hope that you can find the same thing with these. So let's take a look. And so the first thing is looking at fractions and um, ways to convert their values into decimals or percentages. So the key with this is to really look for um, some key words that you can use to help reference these fractions in a different way. And so I have the fractions 1 half, 1 fourth, and 1 eighth. And so when I look at these fractions, if I take a half, of course that word sticks out to me um, right away, a half. And I know that if I cut something in half, then I'm cutting it by 50%. And 50% is gonna be the same thing as 0.5. Um, you know, I always think of percent or cent as out of a hundred or out of a dollar, and so that kind of helps me with looking at the decimal value and then the percentage value. The next fraction I have is one fourth, and so when I think of a fourth, I really think of a quarter. You know, it's the same thing. A quarter is another way of representing that. And when I think of a quarter, I, I automatically think of twenty-five cents or twenty-five percent. And if I think of twenty-five cents, I know that I can write that as 0.25. Because when you write it as like a dollar amount, it's you know 0 0.25. So it just kind of helps me out with that. An eighth is a little bit different, um, but I know that an eighth is really just the same thing as half of a quarter. So if I know what a quarter is, I can just take that 25 and then divide it by two, cut it in half, um, and I get 12 and a half percent or 0 0.125. So the key with these fractions, again, is to really try and think of a word that you can use to represent the fraction that will help you identify its numerical value. And there's lots of other applications to other fractions, but these are some of the more common ones. So Now I want to look at a special fraction. Um, it's a pretty uncommon one, but it's, it's got a really cool feature, in my opinion, on the decimal value, and that is one-seventh. So one seventh is as a decimal, this really long, crazy decimal, 0 0.142857, um, And it's what's known as a repeating decimal because actually these six digits, 142857, actually repeat forever. Um, and that's a really cool feature with this is that it can be applied to all of the other uh, fractions of a seventh. So two, three, four, five, six sevenths all have a crazy decimal, but they're all related to that one specific repeating set of digits, 142857. And so this is really what happens. You have one seventh, which is 0 0.142857, 142857. The other fractions are really just the same exact, you know, repeating set, just starting at a different point or different digit. So one fourth is here, you start at 142857. Two sevenths, you just move it over, you start at 2 eight, so it's 0 0.2857, 142857, et cetera, et cetera. Three sevenths, you just start at the four. Four sevenths, you start at the five. Five sevenths, you start at the seven. And six sevenths, you start at the eight. So it's really, but once you find your starting point, it's the same repeating set of digits, 142857. And I always thought that was really cool, um, just because it's it's, once you know that one set of repeating digits, then you can identify the other values for two, three, four, five, and six sevenths. And of course, seven over seven or any number divided by itself is just one, so there's no decimal there. It's just a whole number. So I always thought that was kind of cool. A couple other things I want to talk about with tips on um, some quick calculations are um, looking at squaring a number that ends in five, and then a little bit later with summing some numbers. So. If you were asked to square a number that ends in a 5, there's actually a really quick trick you can do for a very simple, quick calculation. Um, and what you do is basically you take the number that is before the 5, whether it's one digit, two digit, three digit, three digits, or whatever, you take that number and you multiply it by itself plus 1, and then you just put a 25 at the end of whatever that is. So let's look at some examples. Let's say you're asked to find or calculate 35 squared. And so that's the same thing as 35 times 35. Well, my digit before the five is a three. So I'm gonna take three, multiply it by itself plus one, which is four. Three times four is 12. And then I'm gonna put 25 at the end of that. So 1225, and that is 35 squared. Let's look at 65 squared. Well, the number before the five in this case is six. 
6 times itself plus 1 is 7. 6 times 7 is 42. So I'm just going to put 25 at the end of that. 42, 25 is what 65 squared is. All right. The next example is a little bit larger of a number. It's 125. And so there's two digits before the 5. In this case, that number is 12. So the rule still applies. I'm going to take 12, multiply it by itself plus 1, which is 13. And that is 156. Put a 25 at the end of that, I get 15,625. And if you check in your calculator, 125 times 125, you'll get 15,625. So this little trick will work for any number that ends in five, whether it's two digits, three digits, four digits, eight, nine, 10 digits, you know, whatever it is, if it ends in a five and you want to square it, this trick will work. And it really works because there's a nice formula or a nice um, a practical value that you could find using FOIL, um, a FOIL method that's really common in algebra. Um, if you want to see the explanation of this using FOIL, then put a comment in the chat box and I can do a video on that and share that with you. All right, let's look at our last little tip that I want to share with you, um, and that is adding up the first n numbers. Um, and so in this case, what you're looking at is, you know, let's say someone asks you to find the sum of the first 10 digits, you know, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, well, there's actually a formula you could use where you don't have to actually add them up one by one. And that formula is here. So n in this case is however many numbers you have. You take that number, multiply it, itself, multiply it by itself plus 1, and then divide it by 2. So let's look at some examples. Let's say you're asked to calculate the first five integers. So in this case, uh, our n value is five because that's how many numbers we have. So I'm going to take five. I'm going to multiply it by itself plus one, which is six. And then I'm going to cut that in half or divide it by two. So five times six is 30. 30 divided by two is 15. So if we check it, you know, we can just add up those numbers. One plus two plus three plus four plus five. If I do that, I actually get 15. So it works. Obviously, you know, with smaller sets of numbers, you know, you may not want to use this formula because adding up one, two, three, four, and five isn't too difficult. But let's say you're asked to find the sum of the first 43 integers. You're probably not going to want to sit there and calculate one plus two plus three plus four all the way to 43. So this formula really comes in handy. So if I plug into my values, I'm going to use 43 for n, and I'll multiply that by 44, and then I'm going to divide that by two. So I encourage you to use a calculator for this. 43 times 44 is going to get you 1,892. And dividing that by 2 is going to get you 946. And if I add up actually the numbers 1 through 43, you'll get the same value. So it's a nice trick to kind of um, make that process much, much quicker. And it's a helpful little formula. So I hope this helps you when you get to looking at fractions and decimals and percents and kind of comparing the values um, remember, remember, you want to find some kind of keyword that's going to help you identify the value of the fraction or the decimal or the percent. And I hope these two little tricks um, are something that you find very interesting. Um, there's plenty more out there in math. Um, and I know these are ones that always just stuck with me. So I hope that they stick with you as you move forward in learning math and reaching your goals. I hope everyone is staying safe. And as always, thanks for watching. Hey everyone, it's Brian, your host of Math Talk. I just want to thank everyone for watching my videos on YouTube and following me on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You know, if you feel like after watching these videos, you still need the better classroom setting or 101, and you live in the Palm Beach County area, come visit our website at www.gedyes.com. Come check out the different locations that we have and find one that suits you best, that's closest to where you are, and you can come take classes. Thanks for watching.